Hi, this is Professor Fernandez, and we are working on class notes D in lesson 10. So this class notes is about proving that this set, actually there are various sets here where n is a natural number, um, are vector spaces. So I'm going to just scroll up real quick to remind you what that means, right? So this is the definition in the previous page of what a vector space is. So I'll just read it and make a few comments. So let V be a set endowed with two arithmetical operations addition of elements of V and scalar multiplication of an element of V with a real number. So, so far, you know, it's kind of like cooking. So we have three ingredients so far. We have a set V, okay? Uh, you know, that think of it as your kitchen cupboard. And then there are two ways that you are told you can combine things in your kitchen, right? You can add stuff and you can multiply stuff, scalar multiplication, okay? Um, so let's read on. So what else does it say? Um, v is called a vector space if it satisfies the 10 axioms below, which we call the vector space axioms. So what are these vector space axioms? So the first one over here tells you that if u and v are elements of v, um, then so are the sum and the difference of little u, little v, right? Uh, and the second one is called, is, is, says that if u is an element of v, then so is the product of u with any real number. Okay, so this is referred to as closure under addition and subtraction, and this is closure under scalar multiplication. Closure here refers to the fact that if you add or subtract two elements of V, you don't get thrown out to a different set. You know, so uh, let's say back to the kitchen analogy, um, if you somehow combine uh, eggs and salt, you don't get a car, right? You get some other food that you may not have um, have have a uh, decided that uh, you you um, particularly want to taste. Um, but so to continue down to the example, um, there are the, the definition, there are lots of other uh, requirements for a set to be a vector space. There are 10 axioms. So it is somewhat restrictive and certainly not every space is a vector space. So having said all that, let me scroll down and get back to this example to prove, prove that all these vector, that all these spaces are vector spaces. Okay, so quick little note before we start, what is this n? So n here, n is a natural number, number, okay? So what do I mean by that? It means that n is one of the quote whole numbers that's positive, okay, starting with one. So the space v1 here, let's write that out. It's a set of vectors x with only one component. So that seems fairly silly, but the way to visualize this space, which I'll do it on the right-hand side here, is if you draw the real line, so here's the real line, um, R, okay? Here's R equals zero. Um, then really this is a vector uh, which is the representation of any number on the real line, right? So let's say you give me a number X1, then the vector corresponding to that number, like we talked about in the previous video, you start at the origin and you draw a vector and you end at that point. Okay, so if you look at the set of all such vectors, so every single number on the real line, you think of getting to all of them with these vectors, okay? Then that set is the vector, is the space V1. We haven't proven that it's a vector space yet. But you should kind of get the hunch that V1 is exactly the same as the space of all real numbers, just interpreted differently, rather than thinking of it as a set of points, right, that is on the real line, we're thinking of it as a set of vectors that literally point to those numbers from zero, right? So you should feel like there's no difference between those two representations of the same space. All right, to continue this very short tour, what is V2? So V2 is a set of vectors with two components, okay, such that X1 and X2, however many there are, are real numbers. All right, and you might be wondering, how come I'm only stopping at two? So if I go back up here to the definition of the space, notice that N here tells you how many components you have. And then this part just tells you all of the components are real numbers. Okay, so you might recognize this space from the previous video and also from the work that you've been doing in this uh, lesson and other ones. 
this is instead of on the right here drawing the real line this is if i draw now the plane xy plane right this over here is the set of vectors in the plane so think of all possible vectors you could draw in the plane right and again we have this what's called an isomorphism which is a fancy abstract algebra term for we have this correspondence between um, pick your favorite point in the plane and i can think of it as a point in the plane or i can think of it as an arrow from the origin to there and to each point in the plane there corresponds exactly one arrow from the origin to that point and vice versa if i draw an uh, arrow from the origin to a point in the plane it will hit exactly one point uh, and never more and never fewer than that so again you should feel like this vector space uh, this space is the same as r to the cartesian plane uh, and that v1 is the same as r so indeed it's true that vn ends up being rn and this is called n dimensional n dimensional euclidean space right so we're we're uh, familiar with r1 that's the real line we're familiar with r2 that's the plane we are familiar with R3, that's three-dimensional Euclidean space. R4 and above becomes very hard to visualize. So I, I won't try that here. Uh, in fact, if you can visualize it, send me an email. I'd love to see it. Um, there are ways to visualize R4, but you know anything five or above gets complicated. Okay, so back to the task at hand. Prove that these are vector spaces. So we are going to try to verify those 10 axioms that I talked about. And in true mathematician form, I will verify just a few and then say the rest can be verified by the viewer. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to, um, to give you some insight as to how you would do that. Okay, so the first axiom said, if um, you had two elements in the space, this space is a set of vectors. So if X is an element of V, that's notation for is in the space V uh, and y is in the space v then is x plus or minus y in the space v this is the question we want to answer if yes then it satisfies the first vector space axiom if no it does not satisfy the first vector space axiom and it is not a vector space right remember to be a vector space you must satisfy all 10 axioms okay so what do i do so i'm going to say that x is a vector that looks like this and y is a vector that looks like this all right and then i'm going to try to calculate x plus or minus y here's where i realize that what i'm doing is just adding and subtracting matrices which we have definitions for we talked about that in a previous video so what do i do i use those definitions so these are both vectors two by one matrices they have the same size so I can add them and subtract them according to our definitions by just adding and subtracting their components. Okay. Um, and at this time, at, at this point, I say, okay, I don't know X1, Y1, X2, Y2, I don't know. But I'm assuming they are in V. So I'm assuming they're all real numbers. So if I go down here, if I add or subtract two real numbers, I get some other real number. I'll call it Z1. If I add or subtract some other two real numbers, I get some other real number. I'll call it Z2. And then I kind of stand back and I ask myself, this new thing that I've obtained, right? The question was, is that in V? Well, what is this V? V here is the space of two by one matrices. So, you know, again, I'm illustrating all this for two by one matrices. Is the space of two by one matrices. So, yes, this is um, in this is in v okay so I'll, I'll start using v2 to make that a little clearer that we're i'm illustrating how this goes for v2 okay so how would i illustrate checking the second so you know i'll just put up here the answer is yes first axiom is satisfied how would i go about checking the second axiom the second axiom says if the vector is in the space and alpha is any real number is alpha times the vector in the space okay so similar thing i am going to start off with my vector in the space and 
alpha any row number. Then when I do alpha times x, goes back again to a definition of how we multiply a matrix by a number. Remember we said you multiply every single component of the matrix by that number. Great, and similar to the reasoning we just used, if I uh, have alpha, that's a row number, multiplied by x1, another row number, I get some other row number. Let me just call it w1. Similar thing down here, right? I get some other row number, w2. So I have obtained another element of the space v2. So once again, my answer to this question is yes. Yes. So the first two axioms are satisfied. And this is that point in the video where I, I foreshadowed, I would say, uh, one can show that the remaining axioms, 3 through 10, also hold for v2. Right? So, and in fact, Vn for any natural number n are all vector spaces. Okay. Again, as I promised, let me just scroll up a little bit and walk you through how you might show some of those remaining axioms 3 through 10 um, and just uh, uh, help you to, um, to think about that. First thing I'll mention is that, you know, this is the definition for a general vector space right here, right? So we don't know what the elements of the set V are. Because in this example, we are talking about vectors, by which I mean n by 1 matrices. You could go back to what we had, I'm going to scroll up here, talked about were the properties of vectors, which of course you recognize now as the vector space axioms, right? So here I was in this video, I verified this property and this property for the space V sub 2, right? So if you wanted to verify this property for V sub 2, for example, what would you do? You would say, oh, if I have one vector plus another vector, is it equal to the same thing as if I swap which vector I'm adding first, right? And of course, you can see based on our definitions that that is going to equal that because in both cases you add the components and for real numbers it doesn't matter which number you add first x1 plus y1 is the same thing as y1 plus x1 um, so that's kind of how you can go through and verify the rest of these definitions for the space v sub n whatever n is